I'm Susan Pollock, and I wanted to first of all say um, how inspired I am by Mila Barry, our young award winner this year of the Barack Award. Mila, your work and as a writer and editor and a social activist has totally inspired me and given me faith in a younger generation. And that's really the purpose of this award that was created by the Cantor Coleman Foundation in concert with the Gloucester Writers Center and the high school. It's something that Henry and James and I have really worked on over these years and seen so many wonderful students. And it's an honor to present the award this year, particularly, and congratulations, Mila. Thank you, Susan, for that uh, opening and to give us a little bit of the history of the award. Um, we were talking before we got started here and we're able to figure out that this is the seventh uh, annual award uh, for activism and writing that we're giving in honor of Amiri Baraka and really in honor of his 2014 visit to Gloucester. I wanted to thank uh, Michael Tells uh, from the uh, English department, the, the head of the English department, as well as Kim Tregilio, who is the advisor to the student newspaper, who collaborate with me on uh, giving this award every year. When I started doing this, of course, I was in the classroom and uh, you know, it was very close to students who are working um, on activist issues um, and in, through their writing and addressing that through their writing and also through the activities and their organizing. And uh, since you know becoming principal for the last five years, it's continued to be really my favorite award. I shouldn't have favorites, maybe, but this is one that's really close to me because it goes back to my days as a teacher. A real formative experience for me as a young man was the work of Amiri Baraka, um, his plays, his poems. Uh, in fact, one of his poems was one of the very first things I taught at Cambridge and Latin High School as an English teacher. Um, having uh, becoming closer and more acquainted with his essays and with his activism uh, in my 20s and into my 30s deepened my appreciation for the complexity of his work and the ways he's able to fuse creativity with political activism and, and something that's been really important to me. When considering this award, we're always, I'm always looking for somebody who has that uh, combination of an interest in um, various forms of writing from journalism to creative writing and then also putting their thoughts and ideas into action. No one uh, exemplifies that more than Mila Barry, who is this year's recipient. Her work uh, with uh, Art for Equity um, will be leaving a lasting legacy in our school for years to come. Uh, we have a banner now, um, Art for Equity banner, in the field house. Mila is also, um, and through the Art for Equity group, raised funds uh, to diversify our curriculum here at Gloucester High School that, um, and working in concert with teachers, as well as diversifying the books available to younger folks throughout Gloucester, throughout our community. This comes at a crucial time in our nation's history and in our, 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 our city's history as, as there's a reckoning with racial justice, uh, something that uh, Amiri Baraka dealt with deeply in his work and, and, and illuminated many aspects of that for me as a, as a young person. Um, and really in that legacy, Mila is continuing that work uh, both through writing and through journalism, but also through activism. So I'm going to invite Mila up now. Uh, to receive the award. So congratulations, Mila. And uh, Mila now is going to uh, read, read a couple poems to us today as well. Yes, cool. Alrighty. Um, so yeah, hi, I'm Mila. These two poems that I picked, um, I just wrote kind of recently. Um, I, you know, when you first, when I first heard about this, I was super excited and I was like, oh my goodness, there's so many different things that I could choose from. Um, just because I've written so much at Gloucester High School, which has been really like a fabulous, it's been a fabulous experience and it's definitely given me so many chances to kind of do the things that I love. Um, but these ones are just spring poems that I've been working on this spring and I figured this is, you know, no better time to share them. Um, so this first one is called The Great Longing. Um, and so here we go. The sea has a great sense of something, a tugging emotion, and it is deep. When we feel it in ourselves, I think that we call it longing, though they aren't quite the same. At night, as she is spinning, the moon will dip her opulescent fingers to touch the sea. She hangs low, like a pearl in the cold, cold sky, and she pulls the tides up and down, so that it seems that nothing on earth can ever be still, not completely. I'm looking for a word for a lack of words, 
A word for a wait. A word for a wish. A wish that's like a longing. A longing like the sea that longs in a way I cannot say. A wish like a man who is carbon but does not know. The sea longs like a god, like a man, like all are one and the same, like there can be no distinction. And at night, the moon hangs on starlight strings, reaching for the water. So this next one is called Like That of the Eye. Um, and this one I wrote in my garden, so there you go. Um, so close your eyes. From forth the earth, those great green vessels, tulip bulbs, bear forth soft gauzy cloaks and powdered lips. Their bodies curved that gentle curve of all organic things, which mimics the fall of the tree or the sun, and which bends in spite of or in compromise with all the acting forces, making the hard cut line or the wobbling sphere like that of the eye. In the skull, a mostly perfect ball made to reflect, refract, to reflect the light that bends around all things. The light that is a particle and a wave and makes a form in an almost perfect human orb, which is wet and sort of slimy and rests in a hollowed out bone, like a tulip's head with its thin brown veins called roots, which see deep, deep to the bottom of the cavity, a rock probably granite, lines the seam of the socket, and the bulb is moist and slippery and curves, and sees up and out and in every direction. Thank you, Mila. Those were really beautiful poems, and perfect for this day and location, and, and in so many ways perfect uh, for this event as well. Uh, I wanted to end by thanking the Cantor Kalman Foundation and the Gloucester Writers' Center for this opportunity for Gloucester High School students each year that really um, helps promote uh, activism and writing here at our school, which is something really deeply important to all of us. And thank you to you know, all of the supporters of, of the Gloucester Writers' Center and Cantor Kalman Foundation for the opportunity. So thank you everybody. Thank you.